Hey guys, welcome back to Final Frontier Homestead. Um, today we are going over our power system and how we power our little off-grid cabin in the woods. So um, I want to start off this video by saying I am not being paid by any of these guys. It's not paid. I just wanted to go over our power system so that our viewers can get an idea of how we power our little cabin and how we live our life. So, um, hi Dawson. Dawson's going to help too. Yeah, he's going to help too. So. Um, our EcoFlow battery, we have a Delta Delta Pro EcoFlow battery. This little thing, I have nothing but good things to say about. Um, it ran everything we needed for power when we lived in the tent. It's run everything we've needed for power since we've been in the cabin itself. Uh, it's been awesome. I, we've never had an issue with it. We even used our little welder with this tiny little battery. Um, it's fantastic. So, and, and along with this, we do have solar panels gonna show you how well those work in the winter time in Alaska as well um, along with our Generac GP 3300i um, inverter generator that is what we use in the winter time these two we use in the winter time um, this guy right here is an EcoFlow generator it doesn't work well in the winter time um, it does run one of the big features of this generator as to why we wanted it is that it runs on gas and propane so you can do either or which is really nice a really nice feature to have so let's get a little bit more into each one something i forgot to mention milwaukee batteries we have a ton of milwaukee batteries we ton have a ton of milwaukee tools so that's another way that we store our energy something that some people don't really think about is like yeah you can have a, all the solar panels in the world but where are you going to store that power a lot of people use lead acid batteries. We didn't want to go that route. We wanted something portable, something easy to use. This thing is awesome and super easy to use. Typically, we charge this battery either one time in the morning and one time at night. And typically it gets us through a whole day running lights, charging phones, running the TV for a little Dawson and a DVD player. It's really all we have in the cabin. I'm gonna go over that too so you guys can see what we are powering. Um, and in the winter time, we strictly run our Generac. This thing has been great for us personally. Have never had an issue with it. Starts right up, runs. We are also very nice to our generators. We keep our generators in the house in the winter time so that they stay warm. And then we'll bring them outside, start them up, and let them run outside. Once they're done, they go right back in the house so that they stay warm. In the summertime, running these two in conjunction is awesome. Our battery and this generator it has an app. EcoFlow has a great app where you can set this up to where this thing will automatically turn on when your battery hits whatever percentage you want. 20% is what we have it set at. So I don't have to do a thing in the summertime. Between this being plugged in all the time and, this, and the solar panels being plugged in all the time, we have constant power without me having to do anything. This thing just kicks on when it needs to. It's great. Um, Another benefit is like I mentioned earlier, it does run on either gas or propane, which is nice to be able to switch it up. Propane's a little bit cheaper up here. Something else to know, a downside of this generator, the reason we don't use it in the winter time is it won't run. If it's below like 20 degrees, this thing won't run. It's got a smart thing in it and it says it's too cold to run. So do not rely on this if you're gonna move to Alaska. That's why we have our Generac right behind me that's why we run that in the winter time because this thing runs great and this thing won't even start so just a note this is our solar panel setup you can tell how useless they are in the winter time we haven't even cleaned the snow off reason being is the sun will not come low enough to even hit these guys at this point in the year it's january 23rd it's one o'clock in the afternoon and as you can see there's no sun on these bad boys so typically, come next month, they should start coming on. Um, we should start getting sun low enough that we can use them again. So at that point, we'll clean them off. Something else I wanted to show you, Justin made this power box, as you will. Um, it's got all of our extension cords and everything in it. But this is how we get power in and out of the house. So he made it so that these actually go through the wall and into the house so that way we can charge our battery um, and get power out without having to run cords through the door or a window or anything like that so 
that's been awesome for us. There's insulation and everything in there, but that's just a through wall system. So that way we can get power in when the generators are running. Otherwise we would have had to bring our EcoFlow outside to charge it, which would not be good in the winter time. Now that we are back inside, I wanted to show you, and I got everything rehooked back up. Um, so there's our little EcoFlow down here, little power system area. Uh, I got the cover put back on it. We put a cover on it. I know it's inside, but um, it's still pretty cold down on the floor in this cabin, so we keep it wrapped up. Just seems to help it stay the right temperature. So, um, as you can see, we have cords everywhere. <laughs> um, we have our big yellow plug-in over there that has five plug-ins. Runs just fine. We've got our food processor, a um, little food saver, vacuum sealer. Um, this right here is our water pump battery charger and our Milwaukee battery charger. So that's everything there. Um, now you can kind of see where that is and our cords that go in and out from outside are plumb behind there. Another really great feature um, that Milwaukee has is they have this little plug-in that you can buy. It goes right into your Milwaukee battery and then you can use it as a plug-in for AC and for USB. Um, it's great. And this is what we use to power our kitchen light. That's what makes that noise. I didn't realize it was making that noise in my last video, so I'm sorry about that, but that covers our little kitchen light that we have. We just have the cord run straight down and just plugs in right there. Works great. Diving into solar in Alaska, we live in interior Alaska. I'm not going to say exactly where we're at. Please don't ask me. There's too many weirdos out there. I'm not going to say where I'm at. We're in interior Alaska. The sun does come out in the wintertime. We get about four hours of daylight, but it only just peaks on the horizon. So it does not hit our solar panels basically for like the end of December, all of January, and usually into February. Sometime in February is when we started getting sun on our solar panels last year. So we're gonna see when we get them this year. But if you're going to move to Alaska, do not rely on solar power. Um, even in the summertime, there's plenty of days where it's really cloudy. So you have to have a generator and it makes sense. I remember looking at lots of off-grid properties when we were trying to find some place to buy and it was like every cabin was just run off generators. And I thought, why didn't they have solar? But after living here, I get it. There's a lot of cloud cover um, and a lot of times in the winter where you're not going to get solar for months. So keep that in mind. Like, even though we wanted to do this self-sufficiently um, and have as little, you know, money going out as possible, as little bills, as you would say, we still have a, a power bill. It's just in the form of gasoline in the wintertime because we have to run our generator because we get zero solar. So... Keep that in mind if you're going to move to Alaska. If you're in another place that gets sun all the time, you could probably just run off this little EcoFlow solar and that if you live as, as simply as we do. Some real talk now um, about living off grid and our small power system. Um, it powers everything that we need. We don't require a lot of power. We have behind me, you'll see a lamp um, our TV, our DVD player, our washer and dryer right there, um, which is also like an eco-friendly, doesn't pull very much, and one more lamp over on my nightstand. So we don't have a lot to power. Um, we actually didn't even have a TV until recently. <laughs> um, we didn't have a TV the whole first winter we were here. We don't require a lot of power, like I said. We came to Alaska to live a simple life. We wanted to be as self-sufficient as we could. And um, I didn't get into a lot of specifics about like our EcoFlow and about our generators and how much water they push and blah, 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 how much they run. If you are looking at this video as information because you want to move to Alaska or you want to move off grid and you're trying to build your own power system, do your own research don't believe everybody on YouTube. That's what got us into trouble um, many times up here. Anybody can spew whatever they want on YouTube. I can say whatever I want. 
right now and you'd be listening, right? Um, just because somebody on YouTube says it's true and says it works does not mean it'll work for you. This system will not power your house. In no way will it power a house. A typical house goes through like 15 kilowatts of power a day. This thing pushes out one in an hour. So keep that in mind. Um, this is for a very simple, small living. We don't power a lot. We don't need a lot. We don't want a lot. Just to show the kind of people we are too, this hairdryer, my mom gave it to me when she came to visit when my son was born uh, so that I could blow dry my hair. Do I use it to blow dry my hair? No. The only time I use this thing is when I need to defrost the window right behind you so I can get water into my house. So that's the kind of people we are. We wanted to live this way. This was our choice. Um, and we're not looking for any input on a better power system. We like what we have. It works for us. I don't think we'll ever get on the grid. Everybody keeps saying, oh, you need to get power and blah, blah, blah. But that's not why we did this. So if you're looking to go off grid and if you're looking to go to Alaska, do your own research. Because like I said, if you don't and you believe everything and everybody you see on YouTube, it's going to get you into trouble. So that's another reason I'm starting this YouTube channel is to shed some light on real world off grid living from people who came here and lived in a tent and built a cabin and have survived one and a half winters uh, with a newborn in that cabin. So um, that's my two cents. That's something I really wanted to mention to you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and we'll catch you on the flip side. I realize watching these I'm kind of whispering but that's because this little guy is taking a snooze. Cutie pie.